Then, Crumpets trotted in front of her companion. You! You're the security I've heard so much about! Unlike Shrapnel, Crumpets spoke with a strange, smooth accent. Her armor had slightly different decorations around its edges. And, instead of heavy weapons, she possessed a long rifle and what looked like a belt-fed shotgun. Jolly good to meet you, girl. Been following you ever since the DJ mentioned you helping those Crusader children. Uh... Shrapnel said exactly what I thought as Crumpets reached out and shook my hoof vigorously. Hello? Crumpets? We're supposed to be shooting her. I looked past where the family was creeping out of sight into the ruins as more rangers approached. I'd call that a victory. Shooting her? She whirled in Shrapnel. Are you daft? She's the heroine of Hoovington. She's fought things I can hardly imagine. Why, half of us agreed to come to your aid because of her. And you want to shoot her? I'd rather you didn't. I bit my lip as I pointed at her belt-fed shotgun. Is that... that's not an iron pony, is it? She turned and looked at it. Oh no, it's an Archer 16 based off an early model IF-86. Useful against bloodwings, metacores, crawlers, and gorals. I don't think that they've made a non-power armor model, though. I think we have far more monsters about old Trottingham than you do here in the Hoof. That certainly makes sense. Hoofington was so deadly that even monsters had a hard time. And is that an IF-72 Longhorn? Lacuna asked softly as she pointed at the rifle, prompting all of us to look at her. She shrank back. I was simply curious. Oh, look. I'm pointing at an IF-99, and I don't give a fuck at them. Now, get with the program, crumpets. Are you Trottingham pansies going to actually help us out or not? We have our orders, and we need to take her out. Shrapnel shouted. You think I'm going to kill security? Crumpets replied. She turned. Her weapons clicked. You cowardly, dishonorable, contemptible, callow slattern. I would sooner shoot a despicable fiend such as yourself than ever dare to train my bullets on a hero who has bled so much for others. I... you... I suddenly imagined exactly what Shrapnel was seeing. A whole lot of red surrounding her. We have orders! Easily redeemed. Bellowed a familiar voice as he loomed up behind her. Paladin Sugar Apple Bomb's strong hoof picked Shrapnel up, armor and all, and pointed her to the south. I am immediately assigning you to accompany us to the battlefield to help defend our order. I am pleased that you will fulfill this commission to the best of your ability. The other rangers behind him all had the Trottingham style of armor. Paladin bombs, I said with a grin. In return, his blue visor gave me a dangerous gleam that made me shiver. I mean, Paladin Stronghoof. You made it through the fight. He threw shrapnel casually behind him as he dropped back onto all fours. Indubitably, the Stronghoof endurance has been passed down the family line for generations, and I'm quite glad that it has, was I who found you. He looked back over his shoulder as shrapnel. Steam blasting out of his nostrils. As you can see, the Star Paladin has ordered you and your friends to be killed on sight. I grimaced. Damn, I was hoping you could introduce me to your elder. What could never be easy? He sighed and shook his head. And who might aid you, being sent out to keep the line? I fear that until you get to the elder, you won't find any friends aboard the Celestia. That would be a problem. How am I going to get to her, then, without Steel Rain juicing me? No, I can think of only one way, he said in a low voice. You surrender yourself to Chief Acolyte Napalm Strike. He oversees our studies of various munitions and will be at the base in the old dry docks. Give yourself up to him and request to see the Elder. While he shares some of Steel Rain's sentiments about technology, he is an honorable buck. I didn't like this at all giving up, and I thought that my friends would let me hand myself over alone. You sure? He nodded once. And you must do so soon. Even with the Trottingham reinforcements, we are being sorely pushed on all fronts. 
I fear that the Elder may do something drastic to end the war. He then looked at Lacuna. Now, there's just one last thing I must do. I felt a nervous prickle. He didn't seem like the type to just kill her for being an alicorn, but... He approached Lacuna, my other friends moving aside. With a hiss, his helmet detached, and he exposed his beautiful visage. His bright blue eyes gleaming to cause sparkles to dance around as he knelt and reached out a hoof to take hers between his. Please, glorious lady, will you accept my humble apologies for the indignity that I performed upon you? To mar your beautiful throat with such an ugly device is a sin that weighs heavily upon my conscience. Never before have I seen such an expression of perfection, grace, dignity, or humility such as yourself. Lacuna just blinked as she looked down into the shimmering blue eyes. Oh, my. What do I do? What do I do? The goddess, I, we... This has never happened before. She asked me desperately as she blushed furiously. She was asking me for relationship advice. Glory, however, smiled as she covered her lips with a hoof and gave a cough that sounded suspiciously like, Say yes. Lacuna glanced at her, then back at the kneeling strong hoof. Um, uh, yes. His eyes shimmered, and Lacuna quickly looked quite delightful. He stunned as he rose and thrust his power hoof into the air with a whistle of his pneumatic pistons. Yes, he roared, and I could almost have sworn that the sun peeked out behind him. How else could he have glowed like that? Then he took her in his hooves and said... Thank you for your generous forgiveness, sweet lady. My treatment of you was unforgivable. Lacuna blushed from head to hoof. I wonder what the goddess thought of it. I notice he's not apologizing to me, P21 muttered. Suddenly, strong hoof loomed over the blue buck. You! You attempted to glue a live grenade onto my armor through sneakiness and deception. P21 went white as a sheet as he cowered away from strong hoof looking as if he wanted to disappear into the ground. Then Stronghoof put his hoof on P21's shoulder. It also took phenomenal bravery on your part to try and do so to help your friend. You easily could have paid for that with your life. Not many would think enough of an alicorn to risk their lives for her. For your gallantry, I apologize to you as well. P21's mouth opened and then closed. Finally, he just nodded once. Really? What could you say after that? Stronghoof straightened and put his helmet back in place. Once, long ago, we served at the behest of Applejack. Not to wage bloody war, but to defend this land and its people. We've strayed from that noble origin and allowed ourselves to grow petty and covetous. Shrapnel gave a sour snort, though. With half a dozen others watching rapidly, I couldn't see her trying something. But then Paladin Stronghoof turned to face her. Yes, Shrapnel. There is more to being a ranger than power armor and oaths to follow orders. Behind both is an ideal, a calling not simply to be stronger than our enemies, but better as well. A standard for others to look up to. Can you say that you hold such a standard, Shrapnel? The mare fell silent and just stared back and shrank a little as every eye turned on her. She stammered a moment. The huge buck nodded once, and then said gravely, Without that idea, I fear that we are little better than a well-equipped gang, and it is past time for that point to be decided. He turned back towards me and my friends. Good luck. I shall hope for your success. After that, the rangers galloped south towards the sounds of gunfire. Well, that was nice of him. Glory said pleasantly before smiling at Lacuna. And he fancies you. Imagine that. She frowned as she looked at the furiously blushing Olicorn. Are you all right? It won't stop. Lacuna muttered softly. I smiled and shook my head. Steel rangers hitting on Olicorns. Monsters screaming rooms, singing hymns. What's next? The filthy family emerged and slowly approached us. Thanks, security. I thought she was going to shoot all of us. 
The buck rubbed his neck. We've got to get out of here. Everything is nuts. Just nuts. A rampage trot up to him. Anything to report? The rangers hauled a giant bunch of bullets and stuff out of the water while we were collecting radgator eggs. Really huge bullets. They're also moving lots of material on board from the shore. They've had power armor going in and out of the water for a while now, the buck reported. Twenty more arrived from Trottingham this morning, and another thirty from all over. As you can see, they're saving their own. Bastards. He looked in the direction the paladin had gone, and they're sending their best to die. Rampage nodded. Well, hopefully this will be over soon. Bloody butchers. Bill is gonna be terrible. Doubt that. Even any fillies or burners after this fight is over. Heck, might not even be any reavers. We lost Deus and Gorgon. Splitter brought it in this morning. Frenzy, too. No ponies seen Black Dog or Talon. That leaves Big Daddy, Brutus, me, and Psycho Shy of the top ten. Something else, too, the Buck said. Ghouls have been more active than usual. Rocket Town's under attack. By who? Rampage snorted. No pony can get within five miles of that place. Radiation's so bad it gives me a sunburn. Hellhounds, I've heard. Whole damn pack attacking the missile base. Not the space center, though. Not yet. Red Eye is making a mess of the VC all over the east. Zebras sniping at society ponies in the south. It's crazy. Just crazy. He shuddered. We'll get a report in when we get back to Toll. Hell, maybe move to Megamar to Riverside. Everywhere else is just insane right now. Or you could just leave the hoof. P-21 pointed out dryly. Nobody leaves the hoof. The dirty, haggard buck said fantastically before continuing east. Glory stared at them as they left before gaping at Rampage. You mean, they were spies? I just smiled, shaking my head a little. Rampage rolled her eyes. Right now, anyone who's not wearing power armor is a spy against the rangers. You've only just really known Stronghoof. The fact is that most rangers don't give a shit about helping others. They think that they have a goddess-given right to take whatever tech they like. Every now and then, you might find a good ranger. Your strong hoofs, your steel hooves. Maybe it's a hoof thing, but inevitably, they get eaten up while the rest hide in their bunkers and survive. Big Daddy told me about it once. It found a water talisman in a gutted stable. The professor extracted it and got it working. It was amazing. Clean water, enough for a settlement. But of course, they couldn't decide what to do with it. Keeper wanted to sell it. Awesome wanted to install it in his own little kingdom. Don wanted to give it the water away. The professor wanted to study it. But Carrots insisted that it be returned to her. Nothing to do with it. Simply because it was old tech. Anything made by stable tech was the rangers by right. And when the others pressed the issue, she took it and stomped into dust, rather than let out another use of the MWT's tech. That's what the rangers represent. Strong Hoof might be what they could be someday, but he's a minority, and he knows it. I sighed, looking to the north. I could only hope that there was something I could say or offer. I'm more worried about them loading that ship with giant bullets. Maybe they just want to stock up. But, I'd only seen the Celestia from a distance, but I remembered the size of those guns.